Professor Rodriguez, who is the coordinator for the Global Partners Program, the segment we do in Rio, and he is also a professor of logistics at the Copiage Graduate Institute. We are here today. Uh, he has graciously decided to host our part of our class at Petropolis, which is his hometown. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Rodriguez, if you wouldn't mind, would you give us a little history? We visited a couple things today. Um, the Santos Museum, father of aviation for Brazil, and what that means, because everyone in America is thinking it was the Wright brothers in North Carolina. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, Petropolis was a city founded by our last emperor, or the second and last emperor, Peter II. It's also the, the first planet city here. Uh, this emperor was against slavery, so for building this city, designing all the urban plans, uh, he constructed that with the help of German immigrants. So Petropolis also have a lot of German influence in terms of architecture and culinary. There's also a lot of interesting chocolate factories around. Um, uh, specifically, Santos Dumont, yeah, he's considered for the Brazilians a, first of all a great inventor. Uh, he invented the, the wristwatch, and this one for sure is on Guinness Book. I mean, that's not debatable. Um, he has a couple of event, inventions that I think we were able to see in his house, right? He has an uh, interesting thoughts for what a stair should be, or a bathroom, or the concept of sleeping, studying, or designing your own furniture, right? For Brazilians, yes, he's considered the father of aviation more than the Wright brothers because he was in France. Um, his plan, different from the Wright brothers, was self-propelled. So there was an engine. And the flight also, his first, first flight, um, lasted more time. Now the Wright brothers was more of a catapult um, tec um, technique, technology. So it lasted just for a while, right? Like as a, a, I want to say a planning, right, type of device. Um, but in the case of uh, Santos Dumont plane, the 14Bs, um, because it was self-propelled, he was able to circle the Eiffel Tower uh, with a lot of people as, you know, um, preferees or judge uh, for that invention. So that's one of the attractions here, in addition to all royal uh, footprints you have in the city. That was the, the summer resort for the Imperial City. Uh, the city is located in the mountains. I think it's about 800 or 1,000 feet, the elevation. So it has a better weather during the summer. The royal family, from the Brazil royal family, would escape from the heat in Rio and spend some time here. That's, that's initially how the city got its initial um, development. So I'm happy they enjoy uh, uh, coming here to Petropolis, a really different city than Rio. But I would say with uh, similar aspects uh, in terms of population and the karaoke style. Well, it has been a lovely day today. It's given us a break from the heat from Rio. But in the States right now, they probably haven't heard of Petropolis until just recently. And it's clearly a beautiful city that we should know more about. But what they're hearing right now in the States is about the mudslides. Can you tell us a little bit about how devastating that's been to your town? It is. Uh... That actually was devastating, I would say, to the region. This region is called, in Portuguese, uh, Região Serrana. So it's like the mountain region. And it would then compare cities like Petrópolis, where we are right now, Teresópolis, which is other royal city, Nova Friburgo, which was founded by um, Swiss descendants, colonizers, if you would call that, so like New Freiburg. Uh, those cities were actually more heavily affected in terms of destruction. In Petropolis, although we didn't have a lot of deaths with the mudslides, we had a lot of people losing their houses, right? So become homeless and a snap of a finger. Um, this problem is a reflection of the complexity in Brazil of, you know, um, public care, you know, in terms of government, investments that should be made in terms of infrastructure, and particularly in the case of the mudslides, um, where to build the house, right? With which materials? with which engineering technology. And I would say that um, it's not just to blame the people that build houses with very, you know, unstable material in, in really land that you shouldn't be building things. The soil here in this mountain region is thinner compared to, 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 uh, to lower land soil. 
Um, and if you have a, a high amount of rain, mud, mud slides are as no common as I think in the snow. Mm -hmm. You have the, the, the snow, the I would say, yeah, the avalanches. I mean, it's just natural. And I think the same way you don't, you should not be building, right? Ski resorts in areas of avalanches. That should be the rule here. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way because the government since the 80s, 90s, stepped a little out from building popular habitation, popular houses. And rather what they, they, they were doing is like um, financing. So special financing um, solutions with low interest rates. That was the, the new policy for low you know, income house building. However, it's the government cannot control free market and particularly speculation in real estate. I think that's a world trend, right? Everything in terms of real estate is inflated, it's expensive. So the poor masses in Brazil, they can get a low, of course, but it's compatible to what they gain and it's not a lot. And they don't have access to the expensive real estate, uh, which has, is built in better areas, in more safer areas, in rock, instead of just soil, right? Better materials, etc. So I think this, this thing is a tragedy. Uh, it's a mix of lack of coordination in the area of you know, um, preparedness for such weather problems, uh, anticipation and coordination with different you know, institutions that could pr prevent a lot of deaths and losses, right? But at the same point, it is a, a reflection of how chaotic right, and complex things in Brazil can be in terms of business, in terms of government investments, and I think I would say that's really an interesting part of this module is to understand that yes, it's a, it's a big country, has a big wealth, it's a top 10 of GDP in the world, um, but has indeed really um, complex uh, issues like any country. But that sometimes the, our complex issues in Brazil they translate to tragedies, right? To not respecting the, the masses, the poor, uh, etc. Hopefully, one characteristic of our culture is solidarity. So a lot of um, inhabitants, not only from the region, but from the state of Rio, uh, are helping with donations, and blankets, food, etc., for the recovery of the region, right? Even the economy seems like they're going to have um, funds, injection money from Brasilia, right? From federal government. So yeah, it, we have a recovery uh, for the future. But I would say a better hope would be for more sustainable changes. So for better plans from government, um, better education in terms of the people where to build um, those things, that would avoid more of these or such tragedies in the future. Well, that is a great insider's view, which mm -hmm. is something we rarely get and very appreciative of. And on top of that, very appreciative of your gracious hosting in your hometown. We have all thoroughly enjoyed it. It was my pleasure. I loved it as well. Thank you. <laughs>